In this lesson, I'll show you how to calculate osmotic pressure using the osmotic pressure formula. The first question reads, the osmotic pressure of a solution containing 5.87 milligrams of an unknown protein per 10.0 milliliters of solution is 2.45 torr at 25 degrees Celsius. Find the molar mass of the unknown protein. And remember that molar mass is a measure of grams per mole. The osmotic pressure equation is also shown here, and it relates the osmotic pressure, the molarity, the ideal gas constant, and the temperature in Kelvin. In addition, molarity is a measure of the moles of the solute, which is the protein, per the volume of the solution. To do this problem successfully, we'll need to follow these three steps. The first one is, use the given osmotic pressure and temperature to find the molarity of the protein solution. So what I'll do is rearrange this formula where I have pi over RT is equal to the molarity. What I did was I divided both sides of the equation by R times T and that led me to the left side of this equation. This symbol will be replaced with 2.45 torr. So we have 2.45 torr and to convert from torr to atmosphere since our gas constant is in atmosphere we'll multiply this by one atmosphere per every 760 torr. So all of this expression will be placed into there, the numerator of the fraction. This unit and this unit cancel out, and we'll do that calculation afterwards. R is 0 0.08206. You see this power of negative one? That means we take the reciprocal of that unit. That's why it's at the bottom. And that's being multiplied to the temperature, which is 25 degrees Celsius, but we need to put that into Kelvin. So we add 273 to that, giving us 298 Kelvin. Notice that this unit and this unit will also cancel out. Eventually, the atmosphere units will cancel out, leaving us with moles per liter. That's a liter. Using our calculator, 2.45 divided by 760 you should end up with a number that looks like this, divided by everything at the bottom, 0 0.08206, multiplied to 298. So I'll record this number, 1.318, and I'll record a few more digits, just to prevent any rounding errors. Multiply to 10 to the power of negative 4 moles per liter. In step number 2, we have to multiply this number to the volume, which is right here. Because by multiplying this to the volume and making sure that the units are the same, we end up with the moles of the solute, the protein. So I'm going to change 10.0 milliliters into liters. Multiply that by one liter at the top and milliliters at the bottom. This cancels out with that, leaving us with 0 0.01. And if I multiply this volume to this number, I should end up with the amount of moles of the protein. So multiplying this number to 0 0.01, that makes this into negative 6. So 1.31827 times 10 to the power of negative 6 moles of this protein. We're looking for the molar mass. So our final step would be to take the mass, also given in the question, and we need to convert this into grams. So 5.87 milligrams times 1,000 milligrams per every one gram. This means we shift this three times, 0 0.00587 grams. And we'll take this now and divide it by that number so we can get grams per mole. So that number again was 0 0.00587 divided by 1.31827 times 10 to the power of negative 6 gives us 4,452 and we need this to three significant figures so it's 4.45 times 10 to the power of 3. Let me record that underneath. 4.45 times 10 to the power of 3 grams per mole of this protein. That's the answer to question number one. If you'd like to see the answer to question two, make sure you watch part two of this series. We'll see you soon.